The Microsoft Whiteboard has just gotten a major new update. The Whiteboard is a fantastic tool for teaching, presenting ideas to others, collaborating with others in a large unbounded space. Whether you're remote or whether you're in person, it's a fantastic tool. In this video, we're going to look at the Whiteboard plus all of the updates and how to use them. I'm pretty excited to show you all of this because I think by learning this, you're going to be able to present your ideas and collaborate with others in really, really exciting ways. The product has once again improved. Fantastic news, let's go have a look. I hope you're excited to see the Whiteboard. You can see all the Whiteboards that I have here that I've created previously. Boy, this is a really great product. They've made some great changes. I can delete old whiteboards and I can rename them. So delete them just cleans them up a little bit. It's nice to do that every so often. And renaming them just makes them easier to find. Let's say, for example, I teach a certain subject every, you know, every semester. I can create whiteboards to start each of my lessons and I can use those again and again. So that's a very useful tool. And there's something coming up that you're really going to like when it comes to reusability. So one of the things though that is important is to make sure you know which account you're logged in as. So you can sign out and log in with a different account. This is especially useful if you have a professional and a school account. Now, when I create a new whiteboard, you're going to notice the first thing I'm faced with are templates. I can I see all sorts of cool templates here. Now I can turn that off down at the bottom here, but I do want to select a template. I can go into a template and there's many in there. I can preview it and I can just use it if I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and I can pop this template onto the whiteboard I just created. So this is a lesson plan template. I can start filling this out. Later on we'll see how we can collaborate with others to fill it out. I can zoom in and zoom out by using the uh, percentages down here at the bottom. Or I can just center the entire whiteboard contents with the center button in there. And you can scroll in and out. I'm going to move a little bit to the side here to a blank area here. And if I want to get templates, I can go in back to the templates and I can choose other templates on here, including my templates. This is absolutely incredible. If I've created a whiteboard that I really like, I can actually save it as a template. And then I can take that template and paste it into other whiteboards. So here, for example, maybe I want to have a conversation about process mapping. So I can use this again and again and again by having it saved as my template. See, I can scroll in and out. You see the percentage there. It tells me how scrolled in and out I am. And that's fantastic. I can also do things like put a timer onto the whiteboard. This is great for brainstorming sessions where I can go in. I can add minutes to it. I can change it. And when I start the timer, this will create visibility for everybody connected to the whiteboard as to what's going on. So this is a great way to stay in control of your meetings. You can of course pause it and add a minute if you need to, but this is a really good way to sort of keep everybody focused and I can get that off the screen if I want just by clicking again. Now other things that I can do here, I'll just move this around a little bit, you can move around, is I have the follow me. Now follow me comes into play if I'm presenting in teams or if I'm presenting to a group because as I move around, People can get lost and they don't know where I am on the whiteboard. But when I turn the follow me feature on, anything that I do on the whiteboard will be replicated to the screens of the people that are also participating. So it keeps everybody focused on the area that I'm focused on. I can turn that off as well. I can see that right now I'm the only one on the whiteboard here and I can see the last changes were made by me. I can also go in and I can invite others to be part of this whiteboard experience. This is a great feature as well. I can send an email and send a message in there. I can choose their level of access, whether they can edit or just view. That's very handy, especially for students that I might want them to participate sometimes. Sometimes I want them just to view. And then I can set up the parameters under settings for this. You'll notice in my organization, I don't allow external people to come into the whiteboards. So your IT department would have to change that if you do want to invite external visitors. So you can see I've got lots of different changes that I can make in there in terms of how I share whiteboards out. So I'll cancel that for now and we'll just cancel that. But I will show you collaboration in a moment. Now the gear menu here has huge new features. Really, really good. So we have some toggle switches in terms of whether we're going to automatically clean up shapes like triangles and circles and squares and all that stuff. And I can go in and have authorship on there. So especially when we're collaborating, we can see who wrote what, which is very handy. So that's very useful as well. And we can change the background of the whiteboard as well. So I can change both the texture and the color. 
So you can really do some nice things to make a whiteboard just perfect for your environment. I know a lot of math teachers really like to have graph paper here, so that becomes very useful for them as well. And you can use that uh, for drawing and all sorts of cool stuff. Now, the other thing that I can do, and this is, I'm pretty excited about this. I mean, I can get help and all that sort of stuff, but I'm really excited about the export features. I can export in different ways here. So we'll take a look and there's one that's very exciting. I'll show you that. But let's look at exporting the whiteboard as an image. So I can put it out as a standard image or even a high res image. And I can also go out and underneath export here, I could export it out as a PDF. So one of the things is when we do create a whiteboard, either whether we're teaching or if we're collaborating, it is very handy to be able to share that in other formats so that we have a record of what we did. So I can save the whiteboard out as a PDF and that's incredibly useful. Um, I can save it as an image as well, but look at this. So one of the new features we have here is I can save it out uh, as a JSON file and it's zipped up file and it will export all of the links, everything that I have on this whiteboard will be exported into this compressed file so that it can be opened up again and I can get access to all of the objects in there. That's a great export feature. So this gear menu is your friend. Make sure you get familiar with some of the, the features that we have in there. It's very, very cool. Down below here, I can choose to zoom into a specific level. So 100%, 200%, that sort of thing. I can also zoom in and out through the scroll wheel or the plus and minus buttons. And you'll notice when I zoom in and out, in the center, it tells me exactly what level I'm zoomed at. That's great. And I can then center the entire whiteboard with the center button just to get back to sort of the base whiteboard, then choose where I want to go, center in, center out. Now, of course, we have the buttons at the bottom here. This used to be uh, at the side and the top, but now it's at the bottom, makes sense. So I can go back to templates, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring an image into the whiteboard. So I can go and search Bing, Bing images and grab an image there, or I could bring my own images in here, but in this case, I'll search Bing images for a very cool little creature. We'll bring a raccoon in here. So you can see here, oh, there's a cute little raccoon sticking its tongue out at us. So I'll go ahead and bring that into the whiteboard. And now it's going to download the picture of the raccoon that I found using Bing images. And it's going to allow me to paste that onto the whiteboard. So it takes a few moments to download. I'll bring it onto the whiteboard. I can go in here. I can do things like resize it. I can do all sorts of things. Um, you can even make annotations on here. So you can do things like copy it. You can duplicate it. You can do alt text. I can make a comment on it. So I could say, this isn't a raccoon. This is a trash panda. And so I go in there and you'll notice that it's attributed to me. So I'll say okay to that. And now that comment will be attached to that image. So I can go in there and I can, of course, do things like duplicate. I can go things, I can layer it to the front, to the back. I can lock it in place. So there's a lot of things you can do with images and objects that you import into the whiteboard. I can also go in and I can bring documents into the whiteboard. So in my case, I have on my computer, I have a PDF of a calendar. And this is extremely useful, again, if I want to show how to fill out a document or I want to make you know, comments on a calendar. Now, in my case, I only have one page to this PDF, but if I had multiple pages, I could select all of them or individual pages from the PDF, pop that onto my whiteboard, and now I've got this document. I'll zoom in a little bit here, and you can see that I can make annotations on here. So I'll draw circles around specific dates, a square goes around that date there. And so as I make changes to the calendar here, um, if I, I make these changes, I can do all sorts of cool things here. But look what happens if I go in, I can erase them and notice when I erase them, it doesn't, it doesn't erase the PDF, it doesn't erase the PDF, it just erases what was on the PDF. And when I move the whiteboard around, my annotations stay with the PDF. So that's absolutely fantastic. I can erase them. Again, you can just go in and erase them. And, uh, and that way I can reuse documents. So I can reuse and, and work with documents. So that's a great feature. Very happy that they have that. I can also go in and once again, we'll go to the ellipse menu here and I can go in and bring in video. So let's say I want to bring in a YouTube or a Vimeo. I'll bring in a YouTube video. I wonder what YouTube video I should bring in. I heard there's this really good channel out there called Learning and Technology with Frank and they have a video on how to be productive. So I can bring that video in there and then that video will be embedded in my whiteboard and I can actually play the video within the whiteboard. 
This can sometimes be a great way to start a whiteboard conversation or a brainstorming session by maybe playing a video about the topic and then you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to have a conversation about it. So I, I won't play the video here, but I can go in and I can do things like make annotations on it, all sorts of cool stuff. You can also post links. So if I have a link that I want to post in there, I could post in a link. For example, I have my blog. So I'll just go in and type in my blog address in here, franksclass.ca. So I'll go in there and now that link will be there. I'll just move it over here. Notice that it picked up the icon that's part of that blog. That's the favicon. And if I go here, so now I got the blog link in there. I can see the icon. I can make annotations here again. You can do all the things, bring to front, lock it in place. And if I click it, it'll actually go out to a web browser and it'll go into the Frank's Class uh, blog site. So that's another great thing that you can do. So we've, we've looked at a lot. There's still so much more. That's a really good menu in there. Now you've seen me use a few of the icons here. For example, you've seen me go into the pens. The pens are pretty much the way they've been for a while, but again, I have a laser pointer. That's always cool. It's always nice to have a laser pointer in there so I can use that. That's been there in a, for a little while now, but that's a very handy feature to point things out on your whiteboard, especially if you're projecting this onto a screen. Uh, the eraser now allows me to either erase one, uh, the entire stroke I made or a portion of it. If I go in and hold down any of the keys, you can do things like change the color. So if I click it, the pointer and then click it again, you can see I can change the color. Same goes for my highlighter, lots of different colors for the highlighter. Same goes for my pens. The pens have a special feature where I can put an arrow at the end. So when I draw, it'll put a little arrow in there. You can't really see it, so let me zoom in a little bit there. You can see as I'm drawing, it puts an arrow in there. And let's grab another pen. And you can see there's no arrow with that pen. And then if I grab that pen, I can even put in a double arrow. So you change the color, you can put uh, arrowheads on it. I'm going to put this one back to no arrowheads on it. And then that'll become sort of my main one. And I can again scroll in to see a little bit more resolution in there. I can even change the thickness of the pen. When I change the thickness, I usually like to be at 100% here just to, you know, make sure that the thickness is kind of makes sense here. So I'm just going to go in. I'm doing a whole bunch of scribbles in here. So let's do a whole bunch of scribbles. And then what I can do, which is kind of a neat feature as well, let's go here. I can go in, I can put a lasso around the whole thing. And now I can make changes to these, uh, all these scribbles as if they were one object. So I can do things like put them together into a group. I can bring them forward, bring them backwards. And now I can move them around as a group as well. Uh, you can also clean them up. So I can clean them up a little bit and it'll take some of the objects that are in there and sort of interpret, oh, that looks like it should have been a circle. So I can make some changes in there. And, a, and this is a very handy way of maybe you did a drawing and you kind of want to keep it all together. You can do that and keep it all together. And it's a horrible drawing. I'm not an artist. So if I go in here, you can see I've got a lot of options. A favorite option is the ruler. So I can move the ruler here and through the center scroll wheel, I can change the um, angle and then I can draw nice straight lines with the ruler. So this is obviously a very favorite feature of anybody who's any doing any type of drawing or math or anything that they need to do things like have exact angles. They can put a ruler in there. They can, you can do measurements in there, all sorts of good things for teaching. I'll just get some clean space here and I can just center the whole whiteboard. You can see that I've done all sorts of cool stuff here. I wouldn't save this as a template, but I could. And so I'll go in here. I can do things like grab this here and I just right clicked and cleared the canvas and go to hundred percent and start a nice fresh whiteboard here. So other things I can do is I can put some post-it notes. I can do a grid of post-it notes so I can choose the color that I want. It'll put a nice grid on there. Now when I put a grid of post-it notes, it encapsulates them in a box. I can do individual post-it notes. So let's just grab an individual one, put it there. Notice it doesn't have the additional uh, box around it. So here I can make a bunch of changes uh, with the boxed post-it notes. I can make changes, but I can also add new post-it notes to that grid. This is again super helpful for brainstorming or anything where I want to put a title to the grid. Maybe I want to have different teams and each team gets a different set of colored post-it notes. Um, I can go in and make all sorts of comments. So these are, these are much improved as well. So I can do things like choose it and just 
paste it on to where exactly where I want to make the comment. So I love that post-it note. So I'm going to give it lots of gold stars. And then maybe I have another post-it note here. And I just, I really want to applaud those two post-it notes. I can go in and make, you know, all sorts of nice little comments and stuff in there. Just a way of visually, well, not, not comments, but visually react to the post-it notes. For comments, I can use the comments and it'll attribute it because I've got the attribution set. So I can make a comment here about how wonderful the post-it notes are and how, the, how great I think this is. And then I will go ahead and I'll say, okay. And now my comment will be there and it's attributed to me. And I'll have to scroll in a little bit here, but you can see that because I've got a image of myself as an avatar here, so you can see avatar here, when I scroll in, that same avatar will be there and then you can click on it to read the comment that I made. I can put text in here, so I'll do the classic hello world and we can do all sorts of things with text as well. Uh, one of the things we can't do with text, because I'll always get the comment in the video below, is can I use different fonts and such? And the answer right now is still no, but I can do bold, so I can make it bold text. And this text looks really good on the whiteboard. I think the default text is just fine. And then I can make, of course, all the annotation. I can do alt text on there. Alt text is really more applicable maybe to an image where, where I want to do that. But I have the text in there and I have the shape menu. So I have things like arrows and different shapes that I can put in there. And with the shapes, one of the things to know about shapes that sometimes people don't know is that you can go in and you can type in there, but you can make some really interesting modifications to the shape in terms of the fill color as well as the line color. It's a little Christmassy there. So let's go ahead and choose. I can do no line color if I don't want a border around it, but let's do a border here that's gray. So I have a gray border around the green fill in there and I can put text in there as well. So the shape menu is very useful as well. So you can see the whiteboard's looking pretty good these days. There's more. I can collaborate on the whiteboard. So here, my friend Bruce Wayne, I sent him a link and he has joined me and we're gonna do some brainstorming. So the first thing you'll see is that on Bruce's computer, he's seeing the same whiteboard. I put a timer up there. He's, uh, he's ready to collaborate with me. I wonder what we'll talk about. So I'll put things on here. You can see Bruce is here. I'll start putting some objects on the whiteboard. Maybe I'll go to my templates. Maybe I'll choose a brainstorming template. Maybe we'll do some sort of brainstorming. So we'll say, oh, it's a good template. I preview it. I'll add that to the whiteboard. Everything that I'm seeing here, Bruce is seeing on his computer. And so I wonder what we should brainstorm about. I'll give Bruce a prompt. Let's go ahead and ask Bruce. Maybe we could uh, do something to capture the Joker. Uh, Bruce Wayne. I suspect he knows Batman. I, there seems to be some, he's, every time I see Bruce, Batman's somewhere nearby. So he's coming up and see, I can see that he's moved his cursor and he's doing something. Now what Bruce is doing actually here is he's commenting. So he can go in there and he can choose to comment. He can choose to add objects because I did add him with the ability to edit. Let's scroll in a little bit so you can see his comments in there and he made a comment in there and I can reply to Bruce's comment. So we can have a conversation on this whiteboard. And don't forget, this can all be exported as well. So we can keep a record of the conversation we had so we know exactly how we're going to capture the Joker. So I think, you know, just that alone, right? We can react to things. We can put check marks all over. We can put hearts, stars, whatever the case may be. And I can move this to the side. Now, in this case here, Bruce, again, I, I chose to follow me. So he's going to see the board exactly as I see it because I'm controlling what, what's on the board in terms of scrolling and such. So I can use follow me, I can scroll in, scroll out, I can turn the follow me off if, I, if I'd like to. What new features of the Microsoft whiteboard are you most excited about? Comment down below and like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you like learning about how we can use technology to teach and learn better, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and all those good things. Here's some other videos you might like and we'll see you in the next one.